my God, it's early, everybody. Welcome to an episode of Casual Gamer Society, where Dave and I talk about all sorts of gaming-related stuff. How you doing this early morning, Dave? <laughs> Uh, we are recording this the morning after recording an episode of playing games with strangers. Uh, several people have been asking us to make comment about the recent OGL version 1.1 leak from wizards of the coast and our opinions on that and all everything related to the OGL. Um, but before we start hammering into that, let's do our normal banter and try to have some positive sounding stuff to talk about. Dave, what have you been playing lately? Uh, well, if you've been keeping tabs on what I have been playing, I finished graveyard keeper, which is, how was that? Wonderful. Um, it was one of those games where you just keep going and going and the ending was kind of abrupt, but, uh, it was fun. It was a really enjoyable game. Was it one of those games that, ended unexpectedly like you just thought you were doing a regular quest or whatever and then all of a sudden it's just like oh here's the credits yeah like i was like i was trying to find like all of the all of the items i need to to activate this laser in order to go back home and i got all the things i go i activate the laser and one cutscene later game over credits roll I was like all right cool now i'm gonna go back and do the rest of the stuff that was like side questy or DLC <laughs> stuff. So technically did, I'm done with that game. Did it, did it leave you with a empty feeling inside once you were done? Just like, what do I do now? Yeah, a little bit. And don't you, now... don't you hate that, 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 that vacuum, that <laughs> game, that gaming void after you finish something? Yeah. I think it was more because I, I had spent, I haven't even looked at like my final total of hours, but over oh, over a hundred. I I I have yeah. been watching you on my <laughs> on my Switch since since I bought it. So and so yeah, so it was over a hundred hours, which is that's a lot of time, you know, for somebody with a full time job, multiple hobbies, all mm -hmm. that stuff, um, and a family. And so yeah, I I finished it, and there was that moment of oh man, it's over. And then I went to the home screen of my Switch and I was like, oh, look, there's like 500 more games I haven't finished. So I guess I'm <laughs> going to start playing Stardew Valley again. So that's where I'm at. So on a, on a scale of one to ten, what would you give it? Um, I probably give it a having finished it. I'd probably give it maybe seven and a half, eight. Yeah. Which is, I would say it was it was really good. It was really enjoyable. But the ending was a bummer. Because mm. it was just so abrupt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I have been, I haven't really been playing anything spe specifically. Like I had for we oddly enough, because like, I, I think, I think I had my switch the last time we played last time we did an episode. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been just kind of bumming around getting games for it. Like I, I, I like to have a fairly robust library of games for whatever console that I have. Um, but really the one that I've been, I had been chiseling away the most at, uh, well, two games, um, Cthulhu saves Christmas, which I bought right before Christmas. And I just poop socked the whole thing, uh, <laughs> to the, to the point where I, I had to have it finished on Christmas. Cause it, it, in, in, in my compartmentalized brain, I can't play that game after Christmas. It doesn't make sense. It's like watching Christmas movies in July. You just don't right. do it. Right. Um, so I poop socked my way through that, and that's a that's a phrase. I, I've it's, never it's heard a, that it's, before. <laughs> you've never heard that before? I don't think so. It, 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 okay, so for those of you out there who aren't familiar with that term, uh, that phrase is what you do when you just you're you're just basically nonstop grinding a game uh, to power your way through it in a short period of time, um, and it, it basically you know it, it comes from this ridiculous idea like you're sitting at a computer and you refuse to go away from it so you're basically pooping in a sock ah uh, okay i was gonna say what are the origins of this word um gotcha but but i i basically finished it in two days and it, it's a it's a jrpg um where you play cthulhu <laughs> and you are fighting all these baddies to save santa claus so christmas can happen so you can get your 
world ending powers back. <laughs> uh, it, that sounds about right. There is so much, there is so much sarcastic humor in it. I highly recommend it. I would give that probably about an eight and a half. Just cool. Just for, just for the writing. Um, and, but you know, once I grinded through that, then I, for whatever reason, I just dove into the NES emulator that you get for the, for the on, uh, Nintendo switch online. Yeah. And uh, I, I was playing Kirby Kirby's adventure, the first Kirby yeah. game. And I beat that. I'd, I'd never beaten it before, but it, mm-hmm. I, I just sat down and just started grinding away at it. And I beat that. And I'm like, wow, I, for some reason, this resonated with me. Um, <laughs> I tried to, I tried to, pl- I tried to jump in and play Kirby dreamland three on the SNES emulator. I'm like, ah, eh, this doesn't emulate it. This doesn't resonate with me as well as the old NES game. So okay. I don't know what that says. Um, and, and that was a lot of fun. I'd probably give that one about an eight. Um, I picked up the two saints row games that have been transferred over to the switch. Okay. So that's three and four. Um, and of course the saints row games are ridiculous and <laughs> yeah. off the wall They're and stuff wild. like that i i uh, did pick up the tmnt cowabunga collection oh finally yeah uh you uh, branson has it too so you me and branson can get in on some of that uh arcade beat up action yeah That'd yeah be fun. I, so i'd be i'd be into that um but yeah so uh, a lot of a lot of switch gaming i and it's not because i don't like my ps5 it's just the switch is so new and i'm the idea of playing console games in a handheld is just yeah there's there's a convenience factor with Mm -hmm. the switch that um actually um yesterday i ordered a a backbone have you ever heard of those uh basically their their controllers just snap onto your your phone right and it's supposed to be like the controller to get and since i have game pass i have cloud gaming included Mm -hmm. in that and i was like well why not Instead of getting another Xbox and bringing it up to my office, I can have my phone and we'll see how that works. So next time, next time we record an episode, I'll have an opinion on that. Cool. cool, cool. I look forward to hearing that. Uh, I, I still have reservations about cloud gaming. It just even on my even on my gigabit Internet, the in, the input delay is just it's it's noticeable and I, I don't like it. I haven't noticed it too much on my end. Um, but yeah, with, 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 with my PS five though, I, I haven't touched it a whole lot. Uh, I've been meaning to get back to it. There's some games that have come out that I definitely want to try God of war mm-hmm. being the first and foremost on that list. So I am hoping to talk about that more in the next episode. Uh, but that's not what we're here for today. Let's go ahead and roll over to this. I, I you know i'm trying to think of a nice way of putting it that doesn't come across as being a negative nancy but the this ogl with wizards of the coast so for those of you out there who don't know what we're talking about wizards of the coast is the publisher of the dungeons and dragons tabletop role-playing game system uh, they are owned by hasbro um and OGL stands for open gaming license. The original open gaming license that wizards had implemented, or the one that's referred to as 1.0 uh, basically stated that, uh, you know, if you want to create your own, whatever for this game, have at it, we're not going to litigate. We're not going to charge you. You know, this game is made for fun. Uh, and it was in perpetuity forever and ever. Amen. Um, and that, that, that's basically allowed small content creators such as our podcast playing games of strangers, as well as companies like Cobalt press who create supplemental materials, um, critical role, criti- things like critical role to create their cartoon that they have on Amazon just all of that it allowed people to develop basically it allowed the dungeons and dragons community to develop and become as massive as it is um and 
recently it's been leaked that Wizards of the Coast, we're, we're going to refer to them as Watsy going forward mm-hmm. just because that's the common vernacular. So if you hear us say Watsy, we're talking about Wizards of the Coast. Um, it's been recently leaked that Watsy is planning on changing their open game license to version 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, Dave, why don't you let us know? Because I, I believe, because be, both of us have been doing a bit of reading into this, but I think you are a little bit further into it than i have been why don't you let our listeners know what 1.1 is and we'll get into what is concerning about it so um i'm gonna reference largely for this a post by a creator known as dm dave how fitting um and he's actually a creator i followed for most of the year really really solid third party stuff for dnd um, and he wrote a huge post that really went into a lot of detail, but he's got this section um, that kind of highlights what 1.1 is adding and changing in you know, from 1.0. Uh, so here are the highlights. All creators earning over $50,000 per year have to report earnings. That's never been done before. Creators making over $750,000 have to pay a, per, a high percentage of their revenue. 25%. Yeah. Uh, I think it all depends on where it's from. I know they, they talked to Kickstarter. Kickstarter confirmed it's like 20% over that $750,000. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, apparently Watsi can automatically claim whatever content you create as a sub license. Meaning if you create something that they love, They can just be like, okay, well, this is this is ours now and we're going to do with whatever we want with it, which, you know, sounds good. But at the same time, you're losing, you know, your your ownership of it to a degree. Uh, So then this next part really affects the other show that we do playing games. Um, Any content that isn't a PDF or book is not allowed. So we're talking like virtual tabletops like Foundry or Roll20. Um, it also eliminates board games uh, or video games, miniatures, podcasts. So we would, you know, if this version actually went forward, our show couldn't exist the way that it currently does. And then uh, they've basically said in 1.1 that any other version of the open gaming license is null and void. Uh, You can't you can't use it as like a defense to, well, I created this under OGL 1.0. If you were to go to court, they would just be Mm -hmm. like, nope, it's done. And uh, then in this leaked version, basically, they were like, okay, people are going to have like, I think it was till January 13th to sign it. Now, as we're recording that, that's less than a week away. And it's like, okay, that's like no time. And again, this is a leak, so it's not official. Everything is just kind of supposed at this point. Yeah, I think I think the we we should probably mention that Watsi hasn't made comment on this leak, so right. uh, it, it it's not confirmed. But given some of the some of the like how how Kickstarter has confirmed that Watsy has contacted them about the 20%. Uh, there, there has been certain things that have occurred behind the scenes that kind of lean towards this being a real thing. But right. uh, that being said, this is all hearsay until it's been con- confirmed by Watsy and Hasbro. So, uh, yeah. but it, there's, there's enough support for it to be, to merit the dumpster fire that's been happening in this backlash. Yeah. And they, they really, to me kind of confirmed some things when, uh, so there's an official D and D discord and basically they showed up and were like one of their moderators, their admin was like, here's the deal. You cannot talk about this at all on our discord. No opinions, no thoughts, nothing. They just shut it down outright and they're deleting things, banning people if it gets brought up. So that tells me that, okay, there is some truth to what we're seeing. That is not the way you handle your business. No, (laughs) no, which I think you and I are in agreement. Like it's, it's amazing to just sit here and watch the dumpster fire, just take off. Mm. Um, Now Twitter, if anybody is on Twitter, you know that it is a dumpster fire in and of itself for various reasons. 
And there's a lot of loud and opinionated people there. And the tabletop RPG community over on Twitter has always been pretty loud uh, and, and whatever. But in the last day or so, I'm going to say the last couple days, it has just taken off. Like there you're, John, you brought this up in a private chat where you're seeing a lot of these smaller indie developers go, Hey, we have a system that is not tied to the OGL. So come play our system, try it out here, take a free PDF mm -hmm. to get started on it. And I think that's really cool because right now D and D is dominating the whole community really. Mm -hmm. And there's some other great games, which if you listen to playing games, we've, we've messed with we've kids played on bikes, kids yeah, on bikes. We've Cthulhu. played with call of Cthulhu. We've, uh, played some of those uh, what's his face one page RPGs. Oh yeah, uh, the Grant Howitt stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's a good thing coming out of all of this. Oh yeah, I mean, no situation is completely. No, I'm not gonna say no situation because COVID sucked all around. Uh, <laughs> but most most bad situation. Actually, no, because playing games came out of COVID. So yeah, right there you go. Um, but basically, in, in most negative situations, there's always a positive that that can branch out of it. Um, now what I think what we're seeing here is, um, Dave, I don't, you might be too young to remember this, but in the nineties, uh, Microsoft kind of ran the gamut on personal computers, um, mm -hmm. with windows and windows 95 until some antitrust laws broke up the, how Microsoft had set their stuff up and, and they had to break into different basically smaller companies um, mm. because uh, they were sued by Netscape for antitrust laws for not allowing Netscape to be on windows. Whereas, uh, whereas uh, internet Explorer was the default and all, all, all that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think what we're seeing here is, uh, you know, I love 5e. Don't get me wrong. That That is my system of choice at the moment. However, uh, it, it if we're being honest, Dungeons and Dragons, because of very good, you know, social marketing, what with uh, Stranger Things and Critical Role and all of that has, has kind of been taken the lion's share of the market space when it comes to tabletop tabletop role-playing games. Um, it's kind of everybody's gateway and everybody kind of got into it because of stuff like critical role. And it became even, even bigger because of uh, stuff like stranger things and the adventure zone. And, you know, just, just this explosion of media to uh, demonstrate this method of storytelling. And, um, I, I, I almost think that the brand itself has gotten too big um, and we are watching this very same monopolization fall under the weight of its own hubris. Like they, something I was watching yesterday um, on crit crab I, for those of you out there, crit crab is a, uh, a YouTuber who uh, basically just tells uh, stories from the subreddit, uh, tabletop rpg horror stories which is about terrible things that happen during people's role-playing things it, it can be quite humorous but some of it's like super cringe yeah uh they good, great channel though they they were talking about the ogl and they they did it like <laughs> how'd they say it uh uh ta tabletop rpg publisher goes to war with its fan base <laughs> right <laughs> uh but what what they were saying was uh Oh, I'm, I'm, I just lost my train of thought all of a sudden. <laughs> Been there. Um, uh, oh yeah. But what, what they were saying was uh, with Hasbro and wizards of the coast, they've been trying to make dungeons and dragons more of a multimedia faceted um, brand rather than just tabletop RPG, which we're talking about movies, which there's a, another movie coming out this year for dungeons and dragons. Uh, that I'm hoping fails like the first two, um, <laughs> you know, uh, video games, books, you know, just th they're trying to expand outside of what they are, which, you know, I'm, I'm pro capitalism. You know, if, if you can get somebody to, if, if you can get somebody to pay for your product, by all means go with God. But in the same sense, you know, you don't want to alienate your core fan base, because if you right. do that, you're going to, you're going to destroy the foundation that you've built your house upon 
Yeah. Um. So. Which edit? So it, it's it's kind of fun. It's I love the way that you put that because this is not the first time that this has happened with D and D. Um, when fourth edition came out, uh, they they created the GSL, which was like the game system license, mm-hmm. and it just massively screwed over the players. Mm-hmm. And that's why 5E ended up being developed because they were like, oh, the GSL is a no go. We're in trouble. And I think the I think four fourth edition was only around for, I think, five years. Yeah, the fourth edition was a bad experiment. And the thing about it, I think, and I'm just double checking on Google here, but I think fourth edition was still under the original publisher, which was TSR. And there, there is a lot of, there is a lot of documentation that shows that TSR had handled their property uh, inappropriately, really. Um, And I'm trying to get this pulled up and typing and talking is not my skill (laughs) set mine either uh so yeah this isn't the first time that that this has happened so it's 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 crazy to me for i mean history repeats itself that is tried and true Mm -hmm. uh nobody's gonna argue that but my my brain hurts watching watching watsy be like yeah let's do this thing where and uh, so here's something that i didn't really touch on but like this whole like revenue over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars you know you have to you have to pay the the percentage that they're like the amount of money they're actually getting is like pennies compared to what they make on everything else D. so it's so weird that they're like okay well we're gonna start charging successful creators now it's it's mind-boggling to me especially like no i mean Obviously, the people involved understand the history of like the GSL and fourth edition and things like that, but <laughs> it just hurts. And um, there was something else I okay to, to I want I want to correct myself here real quick before we get some angry fanboys uh, sending us letters. Uh, I I will say that fourth edition was actually under Watsy. Uh, TSR uh, the TSR name was dropped with the release of third edition. Okay. So just putting that out there. Good to know. I, I was not aware of that. Um, oh, there was something else that I was like, this is a good point. And now I've forgotten. I'm cool. sorry. That's on me. It's no, no, early, no. everybody. And <laughs> Dave is on his second cup of coffee. I haven't had any yet. It is eight in the morning where I am. So, but um, yeah, I, it's sad because it, if if anybody was watching live, like I have my D and D books behind me and I know how much money I've put into them. And, you know, obviously like for me personally, and I mean, even for John, like playing games is closing in on three years of being a thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we've poured a lot of energy into five E just creating the show, but also, you know, behind the curtain that we've been talking about, Oh, well let's create like a campaign setting. Let's, let's make our own supplement for this and now we're like okay hold on put everything on pause because we need to watch where this goes because it could negatively affect us like we don't we don't really operate like a business per se like Mm -hmm. yeah there's some money that comes in from patreon but my thing and i brought this up which is i think kind of what started the conversation between you and i which was like i don't want somebody coming after us just because we didn't pay attention Mm -hmm. you know uh it's and I'm also like a person that will worry about stuff that I don't need to worry about. So no. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> uh, but I will, I'll, I'll pour over it. And this is one of those things that like, the more I read, the more frustrated I get. And the more I have to tell myself, just calm down. Nothing's official yet. It's all good. Just, just breathe. But I, I don't like seeing independent creators kicked by no. big companies. Um, And that kind of brings up, or at least brings to mind for me uh, another another thing that was uh, mentioned when the OGL dropped, which was that D and D, not D and D, Watsy reserves the right to terminate anybody's OGL at any point for any reason. Mm. Uh, which, in conjunction with the fact that they can use what you create however they see fit in perpetuity, uh, it basically means 
well, to put it in context of playing games of strangers, they can say, Hey, we really like your characters that you've created here. We're going to create a book series written in the forgotten realms uh, by R.A. Salvatore that we have here. And oh, by the way, uh, we're canceling your license. So you no longer can use those characters. They all your stuff belongs to us. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Uh, basically it, it gives them license to steal your IP. Um, now the argument could be made that that's what, that's what the independent creators are doing, um, with dungeons and dragons is they're taking their IP and making money off of it. So, it, and, and I, I can see that side of the argument, but in the same sense, Watsi is a billion dollar company. Um, and what I've been reading into this is what has spurred this was a call with uh, Hasbro investors that had happened, uh, I believe, last year. I guess Hasbro kind of lost their butts on a few projects and they had determined that Dungeons and Dragons was super unmonetized. Um, and the idea of like gaming passes have been. Mm -hmm tossed around and stuff like that um and if you really think about it with what how they had announced uh what people are calling sixth edition and what they're calling D D one it kind of when you step back and look at it it does look like they are trying to go towards the games as a service model with their tabletop role-playing game yeah and that's that's kind of gross. <laughs> I mean, if you if you think about it. Yeah, I, I think the thing that I was really frustrated with was um, so uh, maybe mid 2022. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I know it's only January 23, but whatever. Um, so probably six months ago, they they announced that they were developing one D&D, &D, which you can also refer to as six E or whatever. Um, and they're putting content out like what they call unearthed arcana, which is basically just play test stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at it going, this is cool. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Like I was getting excited to run the next edition of D and D. So here I am excited. And then this stuff drops with the OGL and I'm like, Oh man, I don't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know? So, and this is, this is a guy that, you know, I have a very small home game that, hasn't run in several months and we have the podcast. So like I'm invested in it, but not like, you know, businesses like Kobold and Griffin's saddlebag or is that what it is? I can't remember. But these companies that are making a living off of creating third party D and D content. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what's frustrated me even more than anything is just, excuse me. Um, it felt like it came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like looking back on these uncovered like articles and conversations. And I, I don't, I'm not a shareholder in any company. So, or an investor. So I don't know what they mean by, you know, Dungeons and Dragons is not monetizable at, or whatever the phrase it's not, was. It's under monetized. Oh, right. Because I own, D, D shirts I, I own plenty of D, D like wearable merch mm -hmm. i'm gonna go see the movie like it's weird to me that it's under monetized when i feel like i see it everywhere mm -hmm. and, and that's that's been a complaint from a lot of people uh now for the people out there who are like me who are like super yay capitalism um <laughs> And they're saying, well, yeah, it's their IP and yada, yada, yada. I understand that, but let me put it in context for you. Uh, be because we're all gamers here. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that most people who are listening to our show right now probably have a console, a video game console of mm -hmm. some sort. Um, so picture your console. Uh, I will say, just for the sake of conversation, I'm going to say PlayStation because people are familiar with the the PlayStation brand. Imagine if Sony was like, great, we have the PS five. It's a console that a lot of people really are into. Uh, we have, and to be fair, Sony does have the bulk of the market share in the home console space at the moment. So this is a good analogy. And, and now basically it's like, what they're saying is 
in order to use a PlayStation, it will only run games that are made by Sony and you can only use peripherals that are made by Sony. So no third party controllers and it will only work with a Sony TV. Uh, so it, it, you know, it's just like no third party support whatsoever. You can't run third party party video games. So, you know, kiss, I can't say Ratchet <laughs> and Clank cause that's owned by Sony now, but like, uh, you know, FIFA. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, kiss, and- kiss Assassin's Creed. Goodbye. Right. And it's even to take that a step further of you already have the PS5 and then in the middle of its life cycle, they're like, oh, now we're putting forth that it only works with Sony everything. Mm-hmm. That's So all, all the games that you had originally had as well, like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like the, the older Assassin's Creed games or Bioshock or, you know, uh, or the old, uh, even the old, uh, what's it? Bethesda games uh like doom Mm -hmm. and uh fallout and all that yeah that that's not going to run on your that's not going to run on your playstation anymore despite the fact that you have save files on there you know but those saves those save files have now been unauthorized and and, and so it's just like "Mm, that's not really it's it's not it's not good for the consumer it's not good for the creators the only people who benefit from that is the publisher yeah and that's Uh, another that's another part of 1.1 where they are, if I remember correctly, they're essentially revoking 1.0, 1.0A mm-hmm. or whatever, basically saying, sure, you guys can still play 5E, but if you publish anything after a specific date for 5E, then you have to follow the 1.1 OGL. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and, not, and not, not only that. But like to put it in context of playing games of strangers, if 1.1 goes through, we have to delete the old episodes of playing games of strangers. They, they cannot be published on any kind of server uh, because uh, th- our ability to use that game system to create uh, the podcast, it, it revoked, it, it gets revoked. Now I have seen a letter from a lawyer stating that the deletion of 1.0 based off of the verbiage within 1.0, it cannot be legitimized because the way the verbiage in 1.0 was that it was in perpetuity, uh, you know, basically forever and ever and always. Amen. Um, so it, it would be interesting to see how that holds up in court. Um, because uh and, and some of the verbiage in 1.1 as leaked um is super ambiguous in what it's trying to say and in legal speak uh am- ambiguity within contract terms is always judged against the per- person who drafts the new contract right. so and to put this in even more perspective 1.0 mm-hmm. is 900 words 1.1 is 9000 words which means a bunch of lawyers got into 1.1 and added a bunch of crap. Yeah. And I know part of it was like, we're protecting it against like NFTs and, and things like that, that are kind of dubious in nature, you know, mm-hmm. depending on where you, what you feel about NFTs. But so it's like, okay, there's probably some legitimate stuff in there, but don't kneecap your, your fan base in the process. Right. So it, it, and it, it's so funny to me, like, like, so we've, we've been a lot of, we've, we've stated a lot of doom and gloom on this show, which is, mm-hmm. is really not where we want to be with the show, but in the same sense, you know, to step back from it, I, in watching it the way that I have been, I have never had so much fun watching a dumpster <laughs> fire. Just, just uh, for some reason, watching a company crush itself under the weight of its own hubris it is just it's delicious. Just like, get me some popcorn. I just want to watch all these videos and read all these threads all day long. Yeah. Uh, because it literally, we are watching Watsy shoot itself in both feet, reload and start working itself up its legs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I, I, I don't, I don't think the people at the top of the food chain at Hasbro and Watsy really considered the fact that, you know, it, it it's, that 1.0 OGL 1.0 is the reason why 5e got so big exactly and to revoke that is basically to say hey you know this this thing that allowed us to print money for the last 15 years Mm -hmm. let's just throw it away yeah it's just like are you dumb or are you high 
I I have to say I am very excited to as as creators in the tabletop space. I'm excited like I'm not excited for our campaign of playing games to end. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited for what comes next to be able to embrace an independent system and I know we talked a little bit about that yesterday before we actually started playing. We've got a couple in mind. So like our show's not going anywhere for anybody no. that listens to it. It's going to change, and I think it's going to change for the better because I feel like we'll really be able to fully embrace a system that isn't going to come and bite us in the butt. Mm-hmm. Uh, something that has been mentioned, the reason why a lot of these third-party companies and creators utilize D- Dungeons & Dragons 5e is because it is a commonly known system. When people listen to our podcast, they can engage with it on another level because they understand the mechanics of the game that's being played. Um, so that is the downfall, the downside to you know having to switch systems. But in the same sense, there is a plethora of so many other great systems out there that are underutilized because of the familiarity of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and so th- what's exciting about this is this is going to cause people uh, because of this OGL, this is going to cause people to look at and engage with these other fantastic systems out there uh, and say, hey, there are other things we can do other than Dungeons and Dragons, and it's OK. Um, because when you had originally let us know, because Dave Dave was the whistleblower for playing games with strangers. He was just like, hey, guys, this. Uh, and when I first read into it, I'm like the earth's on fire and everything's over, you know, like yeah. the, the, this podcast that I've put so much of my heart and soul and my creative mm-hmm. efforts into is done. But then I really started thinking about it. I'm like, no, this is, this is just dungeons and dragons. I mean, yep. you know, there are so many other good systems out there that I've been wanting to play. And this is just the kick in the pants to get out there and try some things. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I've been flirting with call of Cthulhu for years. Mm-hmm. You know, and that, and I can't, you know, if, if you like numbers, <laughs> if you like a lot of stats, uh, I, I would <laughs> recommend that to anybody. Um, yeah. but I've also been, I've also been making eyes at shadow run across, mm-hmm. across the room a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there's other systems and there's, there's, I, I will say this without spoiling anything for playing games with strangers. There are two different systems that we are currently looking at for uh, our next campaign. Um, in the event that OGL dumb point dumb goes through. <laughs> um, so, and you know, there's a lot of good stuff out there. So if there's anybody out there who is overly upset with the changes that Watsi is bringing down, I would recommend go to drive through RPG or any other, uh, online, um, distributor of, mm-hmm. Uh, tabletop role-playing games and check out what's available out there because there's a lot of good stuff out there granted you know it it may not be a system that is immediately familiar to you with the seven polyhedral dice and the stat the stat blocks that you're immediately familiar with but there are so many other ways to tell these interesting stories through tabletop role-playing that are just waiting out there that have been that have been subjugated under the monopolization of wizards of the coast. So yes, the situation sucks, but in the same sense, this could be the dawning of a new Renaissance within the tabletop role-playing, uh, the tabletop role-playing community, um, to really diversify. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had made, I had made the joke in our, uh, personal chat yesterday, when Celeste had said, you know, Wizards of the Coast is going to crumble. And I said, oh, they're, they're a billion dollar company. They're not going to mm-hmm. crumble. I yeah. said, but but what, what we're experiencing is the uh, tabletop communities version of the of the Reformation. If you want to <laughs> consider if you want to consider Watsi as the Catholic Church, uh, it, it, it's just going to become more diversified and a lot more ideas are going to come out of the woodwork. Uh, so it can be exciting. I mean, for, you know, people who are who really love 5e like myself, it's a little bit sad to see it happen. But in the same sense, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. So embrace the positive and, you know, let 
Watsy throw themselves onto the barbecue and let, 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 let's, let's, let's burn the sacred cow and make a few burgers because. Yeah. I, I, I have, it's funny. There have been a lot of times as kind of for lack of a better phrase or title as the lead designer for all the playing games with stranger stuff. There are times where I'm like, ah, I wish we had a different name. But now I'm like, I love that we have such an ambiguous, like, it's not tied to a system. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, Strangers and Stupids or something that's a parody of Dungeons and Dragons. Like, now, like, I am embracing that, the excitement of what is next mm-hmm. and and being able to dip into a different system and and tell new stories because that system is a little different. Mm-hmm. So um, I know we've talked a lot about playing games, but that's kind of the common thing but it's also game related it, but. It, that and it, it's the reason why this ogl means so much to us specifically yeah. i mean because it's something we're both involved with deeply so and i i want to because as we've said multiple times this ogl thing it's not permanent it's not like this is not official so we're still going to play 5e until the end of our campaign and i encourage anybody that is currently playing 5e keep playing it you know if you're not making stuff for it it doesn't affect you directly but you know if you like those supplements and things like that then it's going to affect you because it affects those creators but Mm -hmm. play the game that you enjoy and if this bothers you so much please find another system to try out um there there are just so many i i joined another discord and i kid you not there's a channel just for games that are not connected to the OGL at all. And it's, it's mind boggling. So that's why it's going to take us a little bit of time to go. What is the best system for us? Because we're going to have to look at a lot, even though we're looking at two specifically, uh, there's a lot out there. You can ask squid. Mm -hmm. Um, And if anybody has any, uh, is looking for any recommendations as far as systems uh you know feel free to shoot us a message on the geek devotions discord uh we'll throw some recommendations your way uh shoot dallas and celeste a message they'll forward it to us and we'll be able to answer it for you um you know go through all the uh, all the normal channels and we'll get you the information you're looking for um yep. you know th- it, it sucks to see it happen, but in the same, uh, in a weird way, I'm encouraged by this whole thing. Uh, Dave was fired up last night when we played our game, so <laughs> I was pumped. I was like, <laughs> He's ready to go set and excited at the same time. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm past the point of being upset about it. I'm excited to see how the, everything's going to pan out because I think this will be a great opportunity for other publishers to get their names out there, like Chaosium and powered by the apocalypse and fantasy age and all that so it 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 it, it'll be a good thing in the long run i think um except for maybe watsy i I don't think this is going to end up being a good thing for them at all even even if they back off on some of the stuff within 1.1 the it's turned into a pr nightmare for them and they're they're going to lose a lot of credibility within the uh, gaming community over this i think so do you have anything to add to that conversation, Mr. Clements? I don't think I do. I think I've said what I need to say, and I'm happy to talk to anybody that wants to talk about it on on the Discord or, you know, wherever. Yeah. We're, we're, we're happy to talk to anybody about gaming in general. <laughs> right, right. Because uh, that's it. But let's go ahead and go over to our final segment of the show where we do play Ask a DM. Um, we have a list of questions to ask both Dave and I, as we are both DMS of, uh, campaigns, um, might have to change it to ask a GM because DM is uh dungeons and dragons specific. Uh, but eh, right now we're still under 1.0. Um, that being said, if you have any questions you want to ask us for the ask a DM, uh, go through those same channels we were talking about earlier. We'd love to put your question on the list. Every question we get will be answered on this show eventually. Uh, today, Today's first question comes from Paul Turner, and he asks, why is my DM always killing my character? Is your DM killing your character, or are you making decisions that lead to your character being killed? That is the best response <laughs> to that question. 
uh, I personally, so I've I've never taken out a player character myself. I've come close. Uh, but John taught me, like last year or the year before, actions have consequences. And you have to look at yourself and how you're playing the game first. And if you're looking at it and going, I'm making decisions that make sense for my character. Well, I'll pause you there because just because it makes sense for your character doesn't mean that you're not going to die. Ask Josiah, who plays Pooh. Uh, he's done some really dumb things. And uh, the other thing is, you know, are, are you are you keeping yourself out of situations where death should happen? Because if if you feel like you're free and clear there then and your DM is actually killing your character, then your DM is sadistic and just loves causing chaos mm -hmm. uh, the military has a term for some problematic soldiers that's called nafod and okay. what that stands for is no apparent fear of death uh -huh. and some people run their characters with quite a bit of nafod because you know when you're when you're a player when you're a player it's easy to separate your mind from your character because it's you as a person understand that it's all in a, in a land of make-believe. Um, and so your own sense of na nafod uh, might be contributing to this. You might be, you might be having your character be a bit more unrealistically brazen um, because you're asserting too much of your real world mindset into that character. Whereas if you were that character in real life, you'd probably wouldn't be making some of the decisions that you're making as a character. Um, now this sounds a lot like victim shaming. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's, just, it's your own fault that your character is dying, but in like, I'd say 95% of cases, that's, that's just how it is. Um, you know, if you face tank, if you face tank, a, uh, uh, a, a night gaunt or whatever, <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it, yeah, Don't you're just, you uh, that's dumb. <laughs> um, and so, but in the same sense, if, if, if you are exhibiting the due care that a person would have and your characters are just getting killed for un, um, unreasonable reasons, like, Oh, you tripped off the front step and you break your neck. Um, there are some DMS out there who do have a sadistic side that they, they, they like to play their game DM versus players, which is, it's it's that's a bad situation and if if that's the case if your dm is unreasonably killing your character um then i would suggest finding a new group because yeah, talk that, to your dm first mm -hmm. and if and if you don't get a resolution that you're comfortable with find another group there are mm -hmm. tons out there you can play online like that's a very accessible way to do it that's what we do with playing games but i would i the first thing i would do is analyze your play style first i mean if if you're going out there trying to go saints row be all <laughs> wacky and getting all wacky and dumb dumb then you know and you're and if you're if your dm is trying to play a more seriously styled campaign you know you two have two different you, you guys are approaching the game with two different uh goals in mind and it may not be a good fit so that that's another consideration to take as well. So that'd be the best way I would approach that question. Do you have anything else to add to that? No. All right. Well, our boss, Dallas Mora asks, could you walk through the process of preparing a campaign um, in any game format, D and D uh, call of Cthulhu pathfinder, etc." cetera. I'll, I'll let you take the lead. Um, <laughs> um, I'm still learning. I, I, I will say, Come up, come up with some ideas and hang on loosely. <laughs> um, I mean, really, that's that the, your your story is going to evolve with your character decisions. I mean, that that's just how it is. Um, when I started when I started our first arc in playing games with strangers, I had a completely different thought process in mind. Then some character choices were made and we came to a crossroads and then. The moment we did the crossover with uh, Sumo Girl on uh, on um, Supersonic Pod Comics, uh, everything changed when you came back when 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 they came back, and it was just because I had the opportunity, I had a thought, and like let's go. Uh, so to create a campaign, I would say have plot points in mind, but don't plan for the actions of the characters. Mm -hmm. 
because you will never be able to predict that. <laughs> and they will never do what you want them to do, no matter how hard you try. And I had a reminder of that last night because I was trying to push people in a specific direction and it just ended up into a giant conversation in someone's house. And I'm like, Ugh, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I would say come up with ideas for story beats, but don't write the story in and of itself. Uh, leave, leave room for your players to collaborate. And then as your players come to the table with their character backstories, find ways to interweave their backstories into the story beats that, you know, connect the story beats that you have with characters, backstories, um, cause that creates engagement with your characters. Um, and, you know, and always have dialogue with your characters to find out what is okay with them. Like say, for instance, with Dave, and I love playing with Dave because he lets me play with his character's backstory. You know, and, and that's not okay with some people and that's fine. But Dave's just like, you know, everything I bring to the table, you have full reign on because I want to see where you're going to go with this. This is interesting to me. Um, and so I, I, I have been able to uh, do some fun and interesting things with that collaboratively with Dave, um, as well as other characters that I have at my table. So um, and that's really just your, that develops your campaign as mm -hmm. well, because um for instance, speaking of my character, like I came to John and I was like, so I think I want to take um, a level as warlock. This is, you know, a while back. And John's like, OK, that's cool. You know, and we kind of worked with that and it kind of threw a wrench into the campaign. But it was also another layer of character development, but also campaign development. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's interesting. So yeah, come up with plot points, but hang on loosely and be willing to uh, collaborate with some of your players without telling them specifically how they're collaborating. Cause the biggest, some of the biggest fun that I have had as a player is when my DMS would surprise me with plot points that were built around my character. Just don't let your DM make your character essentially marry lol. That's, that's a bad time. <laughs> yeah but you still had fun with that too um uh do you have anything to add to that dave no i think you covered it pretty well um i i kind of come from because i'm so new to running games um so i guess i do have something to add uh i tend to use a lot of like pre-published stuff i'm working through a pre-published campaign but Make i'm sure also... you only use watc approved campaign materials hey, so far so good <laughs> um that's by convenience not you know i have plenty of other third party stuff that i love but um yeah i i think uh i think for me there it's nice to have a path in a pre-written campaign so maybe that's a way that you start because i think it it, it helps explain structure to you for a campaign mm -hmm. but also don't be afraid like for me and if any of my my players listen to this surprise, I'm a little bored with what we're doing. So <laughs> I'm I'm starting to work in. OK, how do we deviate from where we were going and and go and do something more fun for me? You know, uh, because they're having fun, but I think they're going to have fun regardless. Mm -hmm. So it's very much it's taking that rule of cool that we've talked about a couple of times and really just kind of living by it and, and going with the flow and obviously you don't want your narrative to get too off track. And then, you know, three years later, your players are like, OK, so I was looking at my notes and there's this one thread that we never touched. What happened? You know, always move that thread somewhere else to be picked up later. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be exactly where you left. it. Mm -hmm. So improvisation with story beats is yeah. basically what it comes down to. So. Cool, cool. Well, that is our two questions for Ask a DM. Dave, do you have anything else you want to say on this episode of Casual Gamer Society? I I started playing Stardew Valley again, and I think I'm regretting it already. Anyway, that, that's not related to what we're talking about, but I just want to put that out there. You're regretting it already? Yeah. Tell me about that, it, Dave. Why, why are you regretting it? That game is a haul. And I did the smart thing and I was like, I'm starting completely over and I'm like 20 days in and I, there's a lot. I mean, my wife's been playing that game for like the last two years straight, <laughs> nothing else. I can't commit to that. 
<laughs> all right. Well, that was random. I know. Uh, all right. Well, we want to thank everybody for listening. If you have enjoyed listening to this podcast, please like, rate, and subscribe. Puts us out in front of ind- like-minded individuals like yourselves who want to talk about games. And uh, well, thank you guys for listening to Casual Gamer Society. We are the gaming segment of the geek devotions network the network dedicated to letting you know that you are loved so if you get nothing else beyond this out of this podcast please know that you are loved you are cared for and there's a plan for your life and with that i am john he is dave goodbye everybody (laughs) 